Welcome back and this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering and uh, in this lect series of lect lecture series we are discussing uh, different aspects about of digestion and absorptions. So let us recap what we have discussed so far. So what we have discussed is that we have so uh, what we have discussed is the anatomy or the structures of different parts of the alimentary canal. So what we have discussed, we have discussed about the mouth followed by the buccal cavity. Uh, within the buccal cavity, we have discussed the structure as well as different uh, types of uh, teeth present in the buccal cavity. We have discussed about the tongue and we also mentioned very that about the saliva, buccal cavity followed by the pharyngeal cavity and while discussing about the pharyngeal cavity, we have discussed how the pharyngeal cavity actually regulates the uh, the, uh, the flow of material between the buccal cavity to esophagus or the air passage from the uh, from the nose to the uh, trachea. Uh, followed by we have discussed about the stomach and then followed by the small intestine and the large intestine. These, regarding these organs, we have discussed about the, the external anatomy or the external uh, structure as well as we have discussed what are the different types of uh, layers are present in forming these structures and also what are the different functions of these, these, different, uh, function, these different organs present in the alimentary canal. So these are the main organs present in the alimentary canal. But all these organs are also been uh, they uh, are also have large quantity of accessory uh, digestive uh, organs and these accessory digestive organs are also known as digestive glands so they are not the major organs which are present in the alimentary canal but they have without the help of uh, these uh, accessory uh, uh, organs or the glands the digestion process cannot be accomplished. So, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the different types of glands which are present in the alimentary canal. So, what are the different glands which we are going to discuss? So, we are going to start from the buccal cavity. Within the buccal cavity, we have the salivary glands, followed by we have the glands in the stomach these are called as gastric glands then apart from salivary gland and gastric gland we have some set of different uh, glands which are also present and these are liver pancreas and we also want to discuss the glands which are present in the small intestine and these are called as intestinal glands. What we want to discuss in the this today's topic is that how these glands are actually helping the digestive process what are the different components which are present in these individual salivary gland individual glands and uh, what is their function. So let us start with the salivary glands. So 
So, slavery glands are present in the buccal cavity. Their main product which they secrete is known as saliva. Okay, and we have three different types of slavery glands which are present in the buccal cavity. These are known as parotid glands, uh, uh, sublingual glands and the submandibular glands. As you can see in the PowerPoint, the arrangement as well as the position of these different glands. So, as I said, we have three different types of glands. The one is called parotid gland. The other one is called as submandibular gland and the third one is called as sublingual glands. So, let us discuss about the parotid glands. Parotid glands are actually the glands which are present in our cheek just below the ear and these glands are irregular and yellow in shape and they are, uh, uh, they are actually uh, using the duct which is called as stenosis ducts and these ducts are open in the vestibule and if you have remember I have discussed in my previous lecture that what is the region which is called as vestibule. The region just after the lip and in between the teeth is called as vestibule and, and they, they, they secrete the content which is very close to the upper molar. Then the parotid glands are actually the site where the large where the number of viruses or the bacterial actually infects and one of the popular virus which actually infects these parotid glands are called as paramoxivirus and that actually causes this gland to swell and it causes lot of uh, lot of pain and this condition is called as mumps the other gland which is also called as submandibular gland. The submandibular gland is actually uh, present on the lower jaw and uh, they are putting their, their content or the material to the into the buccal cavity through a duct called as Wharton ducts and uh, the, the, the secretion is coming just below, just uh, next to the uh, middle incisors. The third slavery gland which is also called sublingual gland is present just below the tongue and it is very close to the lower jaw bone and it pours its content through multiple ducts coming from the gland and that is called as these ducts are known as Rivian ducts. So, as you can see that all these three glands are actually uh, secreting the content and as I said in the, our discussion that these, uh, uh, these the contents coming from the slavery glands are called as saliva. So, let us discuss what is the composition of the saliva. So, the composition of the saliva is mostly made up of water. So, what is the composition of saliva? It contains water mostly 99 percent, then it contains a minor quantities of different types of salt. What are the salts it present? It contains sodium, potassium, chloride and bicarbonate. Apart from that, since the saliva is a site where the lot of death is happening and as a result you will see a lot of dead cells also. So, it also contain the epithelial cell debris. Apart from that it contains the uh, uh, important protein called as mucin. 
So, mucin is actually a protein which actually gives the sticky nature of the saliva and that actually uh, uh, that makes the saliva very thick and as a result the saliva remains in our buccal cavity and do lot of functions. In addition to this because the buccal cavity is the primary site through which we take the uh, where from where the food is uh, coming into our mouth the first time it also has the antimicrobial substances. One of the popular antimicrobial substance present in saliva is known as lysozyme. So, lysozyme is actually working against the bacteria and it actually kills the bacteria by lysing their membrane. On the other hand, the pH of the saliva is in the range of 6.7 to 6.8. So, if this is the composition of saliva, the next question will come what will be the function of saliva. So, the function of saliva as the composition itself reflects, it contains the major fraction of water. Okay? So, the first function could be that it keeps the moisture content intact of our buccal cavity. So, it keeps the it keeps our buccal cavity moistened and that actually uh, means that it keeps the tongue, lips and the other structure present in the buccal cavity always uh, wet with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the help of saliva. Then the second is because the water is a major component of the buccal cavity, it actually also uh, dissolve the food content or food ingredients present in any uh, any particular food and that dissolution actually helps in bringing the taste to the food. So, it actually helps in taste of food. Number 3, it actually uh, mix the food along with the mix the food and uh, help to make the bolus and why uh, this is important because once the food is uh, formed into a form in if we get uh, consolidated in the form of a bolus it actually helps to uh, not only formation of bolus but also for the formation uh, for the mastigation so it helps in formation of bolus and it also helps in mastication because once the bolus is formed the complete bolus comes below the teeth and that actually gives the more efficient uh, mastication to churn the food into smaller pieces. As we said the saliva has a pH of 6.7 to 6.8 and it also contains the large quantity of bicarbonate in, uh, into the saliva and as a result it also gives the buffering capacity or the, so it works as a buffering agent to maintain the pH of our buccal cavity or the pH of our mouth. Antimicrobial agents are present, so it actually protects the buccal cavity from the infection. Number 7 <coughs> and because there is a large quantity of saliva what we produce over the course of over a single day, it actually also been used to wash the uh, different components of buccal cavity means it actually been used to wash the uh, the teeth the tongue as well as the other component of the buccal cavity so it is used 
for washing or rinsing buccal cavity. Number eight, saliva also contains the uh, 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 a digestive enzyme known as salivary amylase or the tylin. So, because of the presence of salivary amylase, it actually helps in digestion of the food. Especially carbohydrate because the salivary amylase works on the carbohydrate. So, carbohydrate as you can see the carbohydrate digestion starts from the mouth itself. Now, our discussion about the salivary gland is done. So, now we will go back to the next uh, gland and that is the salivary uh, gland present in the stomach and that is called as the gastric glands. So, if you remember our the previous lecture, in the previous lecture we have discussed that the uh, that the uh, stomach cell wall or the stomach uh, uh, stomach wall is having the different layers and the last layer which was the epithelial layer actually contains different types of glands to help in digestion. So, these are the gastric glands which are present in the stomach. So, uh, as you can see the different component of the gastric gland in a given powerpoint slide, uh, what you can see is the uh, a photograph of the stomach. So, as you we have discussed this structure in the in the previous lecture and we have uh, we have four different uh, component one is fundus, the cardiac, the body part and the pyloric region. So, we have four region within the stomach and all these four regions contains the gastric glands. You have the, uh, the gastric glands which are present in the cardiac region and those are called as cardiac glands. These cardiac glands contains the globulate cells and these globulate cells actually secretes the mucus. Then you have the glands which are present on the pyloric side and these are called as pyloric glands and the pyloric glands actually contains two different types of cells. One is called as globulate cells. So, globulate cells actually secrete the mucus just like as we discussed for the, uh, for the cardiac glands and then it also contains the anterior endocrine cells. These anterior endocrine cells actually secretes the hormones and one of the popular hormone which is coming from the anterior endocrine gland is known as the gastrin. So, gastrin is an hormone which is secreted from the gastric gland or the pyloric glands and their job is to stimulate the gastric gland to secrete large quantity of different content. But the major section of the gastric glands are present in the uh, in the body part or the major part which is forming the stomach and these are called as gastric gland or the principal gland. They are most abundant and they have different types of cells as you can see in this slide that they have uh, four or five different types of cells. They have globulate cells, they have oxygenetic cells, they have peptic cells and then they have the anterior endocrine cells. These anterior endocrine cells are also of different types. So, let us start with the peptic cells. So, peptic cells are actually present in the gastric gland and they produce two proenzymes. So, peptic glands actually produces the pro uh, two proenzymes those are called as pepsinogen as well as and the proreninins and they also secrete the active enzyme that is also called that, that is known as the gastric lipase. 
the proreenin and the proreenin is very very uh, pr predominantly secreted in the kids or the infants and as a result the proreenin is actually uh, that's why the infants can be able to digest the milk and the milk products uh, then comes the oxygenic acid oxygenic cells the oxygenic cells actually secretes the hcl and the castle intrinsic factor and hcl is actually required to maintain a very very acidic environment of the stomach so that all the other enzyme which are being secreted from the peptic cells are working optimally then we have the globulet cells so just like any other part of the stomach where they have a globulet cell the globulet cells are also present in the fundic or the uh, principal uh, uh, glands and the, the the function of these globulet cell in this portion also is to secrete the mucus and then the last portion comes is the anterior endocrine cells see anterior endocrine cells are of different types and their main job is to secrete the different types of signaling molecule or the hormones and we have four different types of anterior endocrine cells one is called g cell and the g cell is as name suggests the g cell is actually the cell which actually secretes the gastrin and as we discussed in the in, in the uh, in in the in a previous time also that the gastrin is required to stimulate the gastric glands to secrete the gastric juice then they uh, the uh, then they also have the d cells and the d cell is actually secreting the somatostatin and somatostatin is a hormone which actually counterbalance the uh, the activity of the gastrin means the so gastrin stimulate the secretion of the uh, uh, the gastric juices whereas the somatostatin actually inhibits this uh, the secretion of gastrin from the g cells then you have the ec cells the ec cells they are actually uh, secreting the three different molecules histamine motelin and the 5 hydroxy uh, tryptamine if you remember when we were discussing about the stomach uh, uh, stomach anatomy we discussed that the stomach secretes large quantity of motelin and that motelin is required to uh, stimulate the churning activity in the mouth or the uh, motions within the alimentary canal whereas the 5 hydroxy tryptamine which is actually a precursor for the serotonin is actually has a inhibitory effect on the secretion of gastric juice so actually the ec cells are maintaining a balance uh, of secreting the gastric juice or inhibiting the gastric juice and then lastly because most of these gland cell glands are need to be regenerate they also have the stem cells and these stem cells are undifferentiated cells which are present in the gastric glands and these gastric glands uh, these stem cells differentiate and de to form either the g cell or the d cell or ec cells so uh, to provide a different types of cells now we'll discuss about the different function of the gastric glands so the the function of gastric gland can be divided into two parts a is that we have discussed that the gastric glands actually secretes large quantity of digestive enzymes so it could be related to function or the function done by the digestive enzymes and so most of the digestive enzyme which are being secreted within uh, by the peptic cells in the uh, in the uh, in the stomach is required to secrete uh, to to digest the food material and then we have the another function that is called the b and the b function comes by the uh, gastric juices to secrete uh, to the uh, to the stomach to secrete the large quantity of acid so what is the function of acid in the uh, secreted by the gastric glands so the function of the acid is 
first function is to stop the digestion process of buccal cavity. So, the enzymes which are present in the slavery glands optimally work in the neutral pH or the pH in the range of 6.7 to 6.8. But as soon as these enzymes enter into the stomach, the pH turns into the 2 or 3 because with the help of acid and that actually stops the digestion process done by the these enzymes. Number 2, as we discussed that the peptic cells secretes two types of proenzymes. So, what is mean by proenzyme is that these enzymes are inactive or the uh, uh, present in the uh, inactive form and they need a proper activation to be uh, working for the digest degradation of the food material. So, they also work for the activation of proenzyme. Number 3, it provides as I said, it provides a very very optimal low pH of pH 2 to 3, so that all these enzymes which are getting activated that is the renin as well as the pepsin should work optimally and digest the food material. Then it also do the denaturation of protein. So, as you know that the if you denature a molecule, it actually increases the efficiency of these enzymes to digest them into the smaller components. Then it also works or helps in the digestion of food. And since the acid is maintaining a very very low pH, it also provides the protection within the stomach for any kinds of infection. Apart from these two components, we also have third component and that is we have a large quantity of mucus being secreted by the these goblet cells and the go, the purpose of having this mucus is that it protects the inner lining of the stomach with the action of these acid as well as the enzymes and once there is a breakdown of this mucus lining that actually causes a disease condition known as ulcer and this is a condition where you will see a large quantity uh, where the mucus lining is removed and then the acid actually reaches to the epithelial lining and then it degrades the cell wall and as a result the person develops the uh, several types of abscesses and that actually causes the bleeding as well as the discomfort to the person. So far what we have discussed is the, that the uh, anatomy of different digestive glands and uh, in this series uh, what we have discussed so far is the, the glands which are present in the buccal cavity that is slavery gland and the gland which is present in the stomach. So now we will continue with the third uh, gland which is present in the alimentary canal and that is the liver. So as you can see in the given slide the structure of the or the position of liver within the uh, within the within the elementary canal. So, liver is a reddish brown organ present on the right side of the abdomen and it is just present below the diaphragm ok and it is the largest gland present in the human body and uh, the liver has a very unique uh, anat uh, unique anatomy from the outside that its upper surface is concave and it is connected to the diaphragm because the uh, liver is present just below the diaphragm. So, it has to be connected to the uh, to the diaphragm so that it will remain intact within the peritoneal cavity by a by a suspens sus uh, suspensory ligament. Uh, technically the liver has two parts the large uh, 
uh, right and the small left lobe. These two lobes are uh, connected by the uh, falciforum uh, ligament and between the lobes there is a bag the between the lobes what you can see is the lobe like the bag like structure and this bag like structure is called as gall bladder and the gall bladder is a site where the bile has been stored which is uh, being produced from the liver. Liver is made up of, of uh, a large number of hepatic lobules and approximately uh, 1 million uh, uh, hepatic lobules are present in the liver and these lobules are actually the structural and the functional unit of the uh, liver and each lobule as you can see in the structure that each lobule actually contains a central uh, central vein uh, in the in the middle in the in the middle of the lobule and uh, the uh, the uh, the lobules are actually radially uh, 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 radially uh, arranged along this central vein the uh, central vein and uh, the and the and the hepatic cords are readily arranged along with the central lobe and the hepatic cords are made up of of specialized these hepatic cords are made up of a specialized cells called as hepatocytes so actually the liver is made up of of the cells which are known as hepatocytes the space between these hepatocytes are actually the uh, the space for the bile canniculi and these bile canniculi which are joined together to form the bile ducts so uh, hepatocytes are actually producing the bile and which is collected into these canniculi and then these canniculi actually uh, transporting the bile through the bile duct hepatic lobules uh, also contains because the liver is the site where the uh, many types of uh, the food is uh, the, the blood is uh, going to for uh, getting the detoxificated the uh, the liver also contains many different types of immune cells such as kaffir cells these kaffir cells are actually the macrophages which are required to kill the infectious organisms and along with that it also contains the lymphocytes uh, which actually secretes the cytokines to generate a robust immune response these two cells are actually required to give the protection within the liver from incoming the infectious organisms in the hepatic cord there is a in the hepatic cord what you see is actually a hepatic portal vein a hepatic artery a lymph vessels and the bile duct and bile duct uh, so it, this is actually a structure of one lobule so there are several such lobules present in the right side and there are several such lobules present in the left side so the so the bile ducts which are coming from the left uh, part of the uh, liver and coming from the right side of the liver are combining together to form the hepatic ducts and these hepatic ducts and the ducts coming from the gall bladder is giving rise to form the common bile ducts and the common bile duct as we have as you have seen in the past also that we have discussed that this common bile ducts is actually uh, 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 combining with the pancreatic duct and it opens into the ampulla of villi so what are the functions of the liver so function of the liver is to produce the bile so what are the functions of the liver number 1 as we said as we discussed uh, that uh, the liver is actually a major organ where the lot of different types of synthesis and breakdown happens so it actually synthesizes the large number of vitamins and one of the such vitamin is that it synthesizes of the vitamin such as vitamin a number 2 because the liver has lot uh, is, is is also being served as a storage ser, uh, storage organ so it also stores different types of food material after the digestion so it stores vitamin 
it also uh, stores the carbohydrate and it also stores the fat. Also, it stores the or it helps in synthesis of proteins. How it stores the uh, carbohydrate and the fat is that it actually performs a function uh, 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 a process known as the gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis means that the synthesis of glucose from the fat or the protein. or protein. Similarly, it also since I said that it stores the carbohydrate, it also stores the carbohydrate by the uh, by a process known as the glycogenesis. So, glycogenesis means the conversion of glucose to glycogen. So, glucose is actually a monomer and glycogen is a polymer. Apart from that, liver is also used to synthesize the bile. So, bile which is being secreted or which is being synthesized from the liver is being stored into the uh, into the um, uh, into the um, by into the gallbladder. As you can see in the PowerPoint slide, the gallbladder is like a uh, uh, balloon like structure or a, a, a storage bag and it actually stores the bile which is coming from the uh, from the liver. And whenever the uh, whenever the, di the the elementary canal requires the uh, the bile salts for uh, for helping in for for digesting the food, it actually uh, put the bile into the small intestine through the opening. So as you, as you can see, that bile duct actually uh, 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 attached to the. Uh, the pancreatic duct and that is known as the common duct and this common duct actually opens into the small intestine near the duodenum uh, thus, uh, through, the, uh, through, the, through the opening known as the ampulla of water. So, the question comes what is the composition of bile? So, the composition of bile and the function what the bile is has to do as we discussed it contains approximately 98 percent water contains inorganic salt of sodium potassium and of sodium potassium bicarbonate then it contains bile salt bile salt of uh, the sodium uh, gluconate sodium glyco the sodium thorocolate These bile salts are required for many functions in the digestive system. Then it also contains a small fraction of lipids mostly the cholesterol 
and phospholipids and then at the end it contains the bile pigment which is bilirubin and bilirubin which is actually a oxidation product of bilirubin and the pH of the saliva is slightly alkaline. So, it is in the range of 7.6 to 8.6. Okay. What is the function of uh, bile? So, bile is actually required for the emulsification of fat. What is mean by emulsification is that it actually break down the fat into a smaller droplets and that smaller droplets actually increases the surface area of fat. So, that it actually get uh, better action of lipases and as a result the fat will be get digested easily. Number 2 is it actually neutralizes neutralizes the acid from stomach. So, the as, a, as, we, as we have just said that bile is actually slightly alkaline and also the bile contains the inorganic salt of sodium and potassium and sodium potassium bicarbonates. So, once the acid comes from the stomach, the, the sodium and potassium actually reacts with the so, uh, is, uh, reacts with the uh, SCL present in the stomach and that actually then it, they, they form the corresponding salt and as a result it neutralizes the acid which is present in the which is coming from the stomach and neutralizes the pH. So, that the pH of the small intestine is suitable for the uh, for the uh, enzymes which are which are being secreted by the uh, gastric glands. Number 3, it actually since it contains a uh, lot of uh, antibiotic or antimicrobial substances, it actually also re stop the growth of bacteria. Number 4, it also helps in activation of the, the, the enzyme which is required for the fat digestion. So, it actually helps in activation of lipases. Lipases are the enzyme which is required for the fat digestion. Apart from that, bile is also being used for many other uh, functions and that all these functions we are going to take up once we will discuss about the digestion process uh, uh, later on. So, now we will go back to we will go to the next uh, uh, next uh, organ and that is called pancreas. Pancreas as you can see in the given slide pancreas is a pancreas is a soft compact and lobulated and the grayish uh, pink gland and it lies between the stomach and the duodenum and it is close to uh, very close to spleen very close to spleen and uh, 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 on average the pancreas has a length of uh, approximately 12 to 15 centimeter and the pancreas uh, the anatomically the pancreas has three region one is called the uh, tail region and the middle portion is called as the body portion and the top portion is called as the head portion. The head portion is present uh, within the curvature of the duodenum and whereas, the body portion lies just below the stomach whereas, the tail portion is 
extended towards the spleen. Uh, the pancreas has two different types of region for performing two different types of functions. One is called the exocrine function, exocrine part, and the other part is called as endocrine part. Exocrine part is actually consists of large number of lobules, and these lobules is made up of of smaller cells known as acini. These acinis are actually made up of of smaller pyramidal like cells, and these acinis are actually. Uh, uh, secreting the different types of pancreatic juice and these juice actually contains many types of proenzyme as well as the active enzyme to help in the digestion process. On the other hand, the endocrine part is actually being focused within the uh, islands of Langerhans. Islands of Langerhans actually is made up of, of polyhedral cells and it is also contains the blood capillaries. The purpose of endocrine part is to secrete different types of hormones from the different types of cells. So, endocrine part actually contains five different types of cells, uh, alpha cells, these alpha cells are actually con present on the periphery of the gland and they are actually secreting the hormone known as glucagon. The glucagon is actually uh, regulating the glucose metabolism. Beta cells are actually present in the center of the endocrine part and they are actually secreting the insulin and as you know that insulin is actually a hormone which controls the glucose metabolism by converting the glucose into the glycogen uh, which the process which is happening in the liver. On the other hand, the third cells which are known as the delta cells. These are the cells which are present on the periphery of the uh, gland and they secrete the somatostatin. The somatostatin actually regulates the activity of alpha and the beta cells and that is how the somatostatin is actually controlling the level of glucagon and insulin from the uh, level, of gluca uh, level of insulin and the uh, uh, glucagon from the uh, pancreas. The fourth cell is known as the gamma cells. The gamma cells are actually the cells which secrete the gastrin and the gastrin as we have discussed when we were discussing about the, uh, uh, we were discussing about the stomach that gastrin is required for stimulating the secretion of uh, the gastric juices from the stomach uh, glands. And the lastly at the end, the, the, it also contains the F cells and these F cells actually secretes the pancreatic polypeptide. The pancreatic polypeptide is actually required to, uh, to, uh, to control the secretion of the, uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, endocrine uh, hormones from the pancreas as well as it also controls the overall secretion activity of the pancreatic cells. So, what are the functions of the pancreas? The function of pancreas is that it is uh, do the two job. One is it secretes pancreatic juices that helps in digestion. Number two, it secretes endocrine hormones and that has the several uh, different that can that has different types of effects. The endocrine hormones are actually regulating the metabolism. One of the example we have just says that it actually regulates the glucose metabolism. So, it uh, insulin is actually converting the glucose to glycogen whereas glucagon is doing the exactly the reverse. On the other hand, it also controls the secretion of gastric juices and on the other third is it also controls the secretion of pancreatic juices. 
Pancreatic juices contain different types of pro-enzyme and as well as the active enzyme to support the digestion whereas the endocrine part is actually required to control the metabolism as well as to control the digestion part. Let us go back to go to the third uh, 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 gland and that is called as the intestinal glands. So, as you can see in the given slide, the we have the intestinal glands and these intestinal glands are actually present within the crypts of Limberhuin and these glands are actually containing typically the different same set of cells which are which we have discussed when we were discussing about the gastric glands except there are few differences. So, the intestinal glands actually contains four different types of cells. These cells are globulate cells. Globulate cells as we have discussed in the past also the globulate cells are actually required to secrete the mucus from the mucus so that the inner lining of the these glands are being protected from the digestive enzymes or the other kind of chemicals which are being secreted during the digestion and required for the digestive process. Then they have the penit cells. The penit cells are actually the cells which are required to secrete the lysozyme as well as the other antimicrobial substances. The, these antimicrobial substances as well as the, uh, the, uh, the lysozyme is actually killing the bacteria if a, there is a, any bacteria which is coming along with the food and it is reaching to the alimentary canal. So, it is like a kind of protection mechanisms. Then they have the just like the gastric gland they also have the anterior endocrine glands endocrine cells and they secrete the uh, two different hormone one is called secretin the other one is called the serotonin and these hormones we have uh, uh, they, they control the secretion of the, uh, the uh, secretion of enzymes from these glands and then they have the enzyme secreting cells these enzyme secreting cells actually secretes different types of digestive enzymes and these digestive enzymes actually is helping into the digestion of the, uh, the digestion within the elementary canal. So, with this uh, uh, we have uh, completed the discussion about the anatomy of the elementary canal and what we have discussed so far is that the anatomy of the major organs such as the buccal cavity, stomach, small intestine and large intestine and as well as the uh, anatomy of the accessory glands such as the slavery glands, gastric glands, uh, uh, intestinal glands, liver and pancreas and with this understanding now we will move on and understand the digestion process which is happening in the stomach. Thank you.